Hi, I'm Vicki Schofield. Welcome to my 40 days of colourful prayer journaling. Today I'm going to be looking at how to draw um, a square cut gem. I'm going to use blue pencils for this. Um, so I've got blues, black and um, a pale yellow for the highlights. And I'm going to be doing a very simple one. This isn't obviously a, a proper cut gem yet. I'm just doing my first attempt at this. I've never tried one before. Um, so this is a very simple one. You can do much fancier ones with more facets, but you have to look at how the light works. So with a gem, the light, um, causes obviously some of the facets to be lighter than others depending on which direction it's coming from. You'll have one facet that's really really light and one that's really dark and the others are going to be in between um, and how you arrange that will give the illusion of a three-dimensional object. So um, let's begin. For some reason, the camera didn't film me drawing the stone very well. So I'm going to uh, attempt another one on a different piece of paper. And, um, but you can see the original one at the end. So the first thing I'm going to do is just draw out a rectangle. I'm doing these roughly. You can do it with a ruler to make it really nice. So the first thing I'm doing is to make diagonals, which gives me the center, and then to draw the section that's going to be the top face, top facet. These are really uneven, <laughs> but you know what? Life is really uneven. I'm not doing perfection today. So, let's just draw that in. Yeah. Not, I tend to do these lines too heavy and it's better if they're not if they're not too heavy. So the first thing I do is decide where the light is coming from. And in this one, I'm going to have the light coming from that direction. So that's going to be the lightest face. So I'm going to use my lightest color. The colors I'm going to use are these three blues plus the indigo and then I've got black and the pale yellow as well if I need them. But I'm starting with the pale blue and I'm just going to do that lightest face. This doesn't need to be completely even because it's a stone and they're not completely even, are they? They have different colours. Now I'm going to use this all over and then use the other colours on top on some of the faces, but not all of them. You can do these stones with a single pencil, but 
I want the unevenness of the different colours because this is natural stones are uneven in colour, they're not one colour all the way through. So next I use the mid tone and that's going to go on these two faces here. And this one here. Like and then I'll use that on here as well. This is going to be the darkest one. And we're going to use the darker ultramarine on top of this. So we're gradually going from light to dark. And you would do that with any set of colours, whatever you're doing. You start with the lightest and move to the darkest. You can always put highlights on afterwards. you want to. I'm not doing that with this one. There's something underneath there because I'm... Oh yes. um, and that's why it's picking up. It's like doing um, a brass rubbing. Do people still do that? It used to be a thing in my teen years. People go up brass rubbing. Um, yes, yeah, so I want that a bit darker. So I'm going to continue to make that darker. There we go. Yes, and I've gone over the edge of there. And this is the trouble. The minute I start trying to correct edges, it's going to get worse and worse. I'm going to stop. Right, and now the very top face, you um, you do dark on that side, light on that, but but very gently. It's just uh, slightly darker down this side. And lighter there. You're just doing the illusion there. Might want to just sharpen that edge a little bit, just so you can see it is an edge we go. And I might want to do something a bit darker here. Just making sure that's in the shadow. And then that's my stone. With more facets you obviously add on more shadows more lights. Um, it gets very complicated but you need a photograph of a jewel to follow if you're going to do that. Hmm, so that was interesting. When I was looking at this I thought I was going to be drawing a gem 
Looking at it, it looks more like a keyboard button. And as I was thinking that, God was saying to me, yes, go and look at your keyboard, which button fits that shape best. And on my keyboard, it's the backspace button. And my backspace button, I'm going to do this in blue because it's not going to show up now. It should be white, shouldn't it? But it won't show up on this. Um, my backspace button on my keyboard just has an arrow. Like this. And now I'm wondering who or what is going to need to be to go back. Where do we need to go back? And it's right in with the happy place. I am hearing that I need to go back or we need to go back to our happy place. Start again from there. And I have no idea what that means at the moment. I need to discuss this with people. So that is what prayer journaling is like for me. I start off thinking I'm going to do one thing, that it's about something. And then it turns into something else. And then I have to sit with God for a while and listen to him about what what he is showing me. Um, and even then it doesn't always make sense or become clear immediately, but it does become clear over time that this is a process, a journey with God as um, I listen more closely to him, as he talks to me, shows me things, guides me. So I hope that was helpful. Um, I invite you to, to step out with God on these, uh, these adventures to try things out in your journal. Because normally, you know, journals are private. I know I'm doing this in real time, which is interesting and different for me. But journals normally are very private spaces where we can explore things safely with God without worrying about what other people will make of it, without worrying about how good we are at drawing or writing or phrasing things or um, or praying you know this isn't um, this isn't a competition this is just a way to allow God to speak to us and to to keep a record of that conversation so that we can keep going back and listening again and seeing new things in what we've written or drawn do try it. Mm -hmm.